America's future. And we understand the opportunity we have before us to turn the page on the fear. Kamala Harris's campaign is officially on life support. I mean, things are getting really bad for her. So if you didn't see, she held a rally in Houston where fans were pissed off because they were told that Beyonce was going to be there and performing. And she only talked for like two or three minutes and she got heckled and booed at that rally in Houston. So if you haven't seen that, take a watch. So yeah, people are just getting fed up with Kamala, and I can't even lie. I think she's a horrible candidate, extremely radical, terrible ideas, but I kind of am starting to feel bad for her, just like on a basic human level. Like, it's got to be really difficult to know that people dislike you so much. I mean, it's not like she's unaware of the fact that she was the most unpopular vice president that there was, and... It must feel so disheartening that there's no genuine love out there for her. How come you ain't never liked me? Like you? Who the hell said I got to like you? I mean, they, they bring out the big celebrities, they bring out the Obamas, they mobilize the media complex, and it's just not working. Nobody's buying it, nobody's liking her. And uh, yeah, Michelle Obama came out for another rally and basically just shamed and insulted everybody uh hoping that that's going to work and then and that's going to get people to change their minds about how they feel and go out and vote for Kamala Harris which obviously isn't going to work you can't just shame people into doing what you want but take a listen to what Michelle Obama had to say uh regarding people who were undecided about voting for Kamala Harris watch I got to ask myself, well, why on earth is this race even close? I, I lay awake at night wondering what in the world is going on. And it's clear to me that the question isn't whether Kamala is ready for this moment, because by every measure, she has demonstrated that she's ready. So I hope you'll forgive me if I'm a little frustrated that some of us are choosing to ignore Donald Trump's gross incompetence while asking Kamala to dazzle us at every turn. So the messaging of vote for me because Trump bad clearly isn't a strategy that's going to work in this election. Joe Biden might might have gotten away with it, but this is not going to work for Kamala Harris. I mean, say what you want about Trump, but he has real genuine love and fandom. The Democrats since Obama have not had that. I mean, Hillary ran on Trump is a Russian plant. Biden ran on Trump is a threat to democracy. And it might have worked in 2020, arguably. But after the last horrendous four years, people have a clear picture of what a Trump presidency and what a Biden-Harris presidency looks like. And they are not buying the Trump evil, Trump bad, Trump's going to make your life worse. And even the media agrees. Frank Luntz, who is a top pollster, had this to say about it. Watch. Uh, Frank, I, 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 I want to know what, you, what your perspective is on. Uh, obviously, we're in the final weeks here. Uh, we're starting to get actual numbers in terms of early vote. It, it goes a little bit beyond the polling now. We have more to work with in terms of understanding where the electorate is, what's going to happen. A lot of my sources feel like the momentum is actually with Trump at this moment uh, and that that is potentially putting him on track to win on election night, perhaps in a bigger way than uh, the, the very close polling would suggest. What do you think? Where are you about what do you think about where we are right now? I can't call it. I'm, I'm not, not asking you to call it. I'm just asking you to help us understand, like, where is that momentum going? Uh, it is heading towards Trump. But what's interesting is that with Harris focused on why she should be elected president, that's when her numbers grew. She's had the best 60 days of any presidential candidate in modern history. And then the moment that she turned anti-Trump and focused on him and said, 
don't vote for me, vote against him, that's when everything froze. And that's the point. She needs to focus on how she's going to make people's lives better, not vote for me because I'm the alternative to Trump. Because at this point, people identify the Trump presidency with a better life, with cheap, with cheaper prices, with better affordability, with lower inflation, with a more secure border, with a more peaceful world. So if you're trying to argue that you're the opposite of Trump, you're basically just saying vote for me if you want more chaos. So Kamala appeared on CBS this morning for an interview and it's just another example of why no one can take this person seriously. She's asked about what restrictions, if any, she would be putting in place as it relates to abortion. Watch. And you have been clear that that is a priority, but what you have not been clear on is what that bill would look like. You've talked about restoring Roe oh, versus Wade. Oh, but I Wade, am very clear. Wait, you've not said what restrictions you would support. Let's put back in place Roe versus Wade. This was not an issue. In Ro when Roe versus Wade was intact for 50 years, half a century, women together with their physicians were here at a medical office talking with physicians. In, women in consultation, if they chose, with their priest, their pastor, their rabbi, their imam. So you were do able support restrictions those, after viability? I support Roe versus Wade being put back into law by Congress and to restore the fundamental right of women to make decisions about their own body. It is that basic. But you know, there, were, there are restrictions. With Roe versus Wade, there were restrictions after viability. We would not be debating this if Donald Trump had not hand-selected three members of the United States Supreme Court with the intention they would undo the protections of Roe v. Wade. And what we have seen, as, as demonstrated last night and every day these last two years, is extraordinary harm that has occurred in America, where women have died because of Trump abortion bans, where women who have survived rape and girls' incest and, and, and no exception for someone whose body has been violated to make a decision about what happens to their body next. We have seen women who are experiencing a, a miscarriage around a pregnancy they prayed for and being denied health care because doctors are afraid they're going to go to prison and those women developing sepsis. We have seen extraordinary harm and pain and suffering happen because of what Donald Trump did in intending and effectuating an overturning of Roe v. Wade. Yes, my first priority is to put back in place those protections and to stop this pain and to stop this injustice that is happening around our country. So then why not say what restrictions you would support as part of that? I've told you. And Let's we... put back in place Roe v. Wade. And this is another one of her key messaging problems. She cannot answer a straight question. Everything has to be vague. Everything has to be a political response, no direct answers, no details, and the American people are getting fed up with it. If there's not gonna be any restrictions, say that. If there are gonna be some restrictions, say that and give some details on what those are gonna be. It's not fair that no one gets to know what you think, what your positions are, and then you criticize us that we don't have a good understanding for who you are and what you're about. Again, I think her campaign is in complete shambles. I think it's been that way for quite a while now, but the fact that she got booed and heckled in two straight rallies says a lot. But anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. I hope you're feeling the excitement. 10 more days till the election. This one is in the bags. I cannot wait for these next four years. It should be great. And let me know if you guys saw the Trump-Rogan interview. I really enjoyed it. Um, I thought it was just a very genuine, real conversation, uh, and uh, I can see why Kamala Harris wants to avoid that because anytime she's forced to get off script and just have a regular conversation with people, um, man, it goes terrible every single time. But if you guys haven't seen my video about why Trump is going to win the election, make sure you click that. I'll put that up on the screen. It's really great. I have some great insight, and uh, I think you guys will get a lot of value out of it. See you in the next one.